righty. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Mark Michelson. This is our third CX Forums Presents CX uh, Connect Live. And uh, today we have special guests and a good friend of mine, Mike Wittenstein from Story Miners. Mike, uh, if you will go ahead and put your video on there and that way we can, hey, there you are. <laughs> uh, and today we're gonna talk about um, ways that you can get support for your big CX idea. I wanna share this a little bit before we get started here. Mike and I met years ago when LinkedIn kind of first started and Mike reached out to me, he goes, hey, we have like 435 people in common or something like that. It was like that was unheard of in those days and uh, so we reached out and we actually went to lunch and all and, and we discovered that we were both in this world of called cx before it was called really cx um that that had to be at least uh, what 15 years ago or something <laughs> it's about yeah lots of rodeos since then lots and lots of rodeos yes exactly and um he's been a cohort of mine on lots of different ventures and speaking around the world at uh, different conferences like for mspa and others Anyhow, I, I'd like to welcome Mike. And uh, Mike, tell us a little bit about yourself that I haven't already covered. <laughs> well, let's see. Um, when I was 13, I started my first business. And you got me into the international speaking business with that introduction to MSPA. And that kickstarted a whole bunch of overseas assignments. So thank you again for that. Ah, blessings. Well, you knew, yeah. you knew Brazil, you knew Portuguese. That was, that was key. <laughs> but, well, that helped a lot. <laughs> and, and some Russian too, which is amazing. <laughs> Yeah. So background wise, I started a digital agency called Galileo in the early 90s. We were one of the first in the world. And by the way, anybody who started a digital agency in the early 90s was also one of the first in the world, but it sounds kind of cool. And I worked for IBM as their as their e-visionary. And that was a blast you know, being an entrepreneur inside such a large organization. And Story Miners, I started in 2002. We specialize in customer experience and strategy. Awesome. So, Mike, you have a secret sauce for getting management's attention uh, and getting them to buy in. I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, it intrigued me. You had you had uh, actually a process like five steps to do that. Can you can you tell us a little bit about that? I, I know that I haven't had a boss in a while, but clients are my bosses, so I have to convince them. Maybe I can apply this to that. But sure. tell, us, tell us about what you got here. The secret sauce. Sure. Well, um, yeah, there are five things that we talked about that we can go over. Um, the most important thing to notice is that a lot of times when you are asked to invent the future or you have a CX idea that you want to roll out in the future, you've got to explain it so well and so quickly that everybody just goes, I got it. I understand. Most people have a certain way of thinking. You know, you've got DISC scores and Belbin scores and all this stuff. Some people are really analytical. Others are very creative. Some say, prove it to me, that kind of thing. So the trick is to um, make sure that people don't resist first because their first inclination is going to be com to compare whatever comes out of your mouth with whatever they've done in the past. And what we found is the most effective, efficient, and pleasant way to get that done is to express your idea as a story. So to not put it so much in ROI and technical terms and things like that, but to just let people know what it's gonna look like and feel like and what it's gonna to mean to them. Can I show you an example? Yes, please do. Okay. You may have seen this before, but here goes. Thank you for pressing the Mayday button. How can I help you? Whoa, who are you? <laughs> I'm Amy, a tech advisor for your new Kindle Fire. I didn't realize I get a live person. Yeah, we're here 24 seven. We can draw on your screen and even show you how to use different features. So I can just press the Mayday button and you're here to help? Hit Mayday and I'm coming to the rescue. Amy, I like you. Aw. <laughs> Intricacy, the revolution. All right, so that was pretty nicely done and all of the given circumstances were there. Uh, what was it like on first occasion for this guy to actually try Amy on Kindle? Mm -hmm. um, and um, the other thing that was in there was a nat some natural setting. Here's how a customer use it. Here's what a customer would look like. Here's how Amy would come across. Here's what she'd say. Here's how it works. Here's what the service is all, all in 30 seconds. And I wouldn't be surprised if Amazon had done a number of those commercials during product and service design because it's one of the fastest, easiest ways to get things across. And when people see that commercial, they go, I want one of those. Yeah, that looks like a great idea because you can see everything at one time. You don't have to like look at a spreadsheet and look at a project plan and look at a technical chart. You know, that's fascinating. I remember when the iPhone came out and I, I was like, why in the heck would I need one of those, right? <laughs> and then they started focusing on the apps and I was like, oh, 
I could do that on my phone, you know? And so the, mm -hmm. it became all about the apps. So, right. It's so important to get nailed down. What is the benefit for the person? What are you solving? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. So to get to that point, there are a couple of other things that you can do. So point number two is to come up with a storyboard or a journey map. And most everybody on, on this event is probably familiar with the journey map. It usually starts off as something like this, lots of post-it notes, lots of discussions, and it can turn into something, something else. What we usually do at Story Miners is turn it into, and this is a real client engagement with McDonald's uh, digital drive-through. We turn it into a detailed animation or cartoon like storyboard. So that not only can you see where's the customer and what they're doing, but how do they feel? What's the expression on their face? What are the little clues that give rise to that really cool experience? That's awesome. So it helps them to visualize the thing as well. Not just hear about it, but visualize it. Yeah, and that trick to storytelling is that when people hear a story, they bring all of their personal experiences with them and they tend to react emotionally because they love to know what's going to happen to somebody else in the story. The reason that soap operas and you know music videos and so many other genres are so popular is that we're really innately curious about other people and how they're going to react. We get a chance to learn how we're going to live as well, which is why story is a really compelling way to share your CX idea. That's fascinating. You know, I've, uh, um, it, I remember the uh, Chick-fil-A uh, training video. Everyone has a story. Do you remember mm -hmm. that one? Mm -hmm. you I know, do. And it, it just makes you almost cry when you, you think about what's going on in people's heads. that's not being said as well. Yeah, that's very true. Very true. So story is centered to all that. Let me see what's another one that we talked about. Um, one of the other things that you can do to sell your idea is to let other people discover it. Okay. And Mark, I don't know if you remember a long time ago, you and I did, let me find this graphic here. Um, you and I did, I'll find it in a minute. Um, but you can take people on an undercover tour. So ah, here's yes, an example, yes, remember. remember that Mark? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the bakery people, I think it was. <laughs> yeah, at, at Perch, which was one of the- just oh, Perch, the, yeah, 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 yeah. It was just a runaway success in terms of a new retail experience. and everybody got a chance to go undercover and shop the store. So when you take people out to see the competition, to look at your own businesses, like if you're in franchise, you wanna go check out some of the restaurants or some of the copy stores, things like that. Give the executives, the sponsors, your teammates, your colleagues, a chance to see through their own eyes what you see. It's one of the most effective evidence building tools out there. It speeds decision-making and it makes it easy. Sometimes we'll take people on walking tours. This is one from Mexico City. Now, not a glamorous shot, but um, 30 people went out to the local mall. Each of them had an undercover shopping assignment, not mystery shopping. Mystery shopping is where you're trying to find out how a business conforms to brand standards for the most part. This was more of an idea exploration. And when people start using their own minds and experiences to figure out, you know, what can I do? How can I do this better? What are some of the ideas that we can bring into our business from out there? It works. And that might not sound like the perfect thing to do because you've got your idea and you want to sell it. But it's just as important to warm the audience up, your sponsors, your boss, et cetera, and to get them engaged. That's equally as important as the idea itself. It doesn't hurt to have the extra time with the client in the field, you know, going to their stores and the competition. We used to run these things called uh, customer safaris and we would take them out. And, and a lot of times we would have an actual customer meet us at whatever location. So mm -hmm. someone who prefer, if we were doing something on say uh, baked goods for breakfast, right? We have people meet us at Starbucks. We'd have another person meet us over, you know, this baked good place or Dunkin' Donuts. And then they yeah. would say what they really liked about the place and what they needed felt they needed to be improved. So just a little twist on the story. <laughs> Very cool. Well, speaking of story, one of the other things that you can do in a customer experience idea is to actually create a story. And this is one that we did for a consultancy who was making a decision to buy or build some technology to run its very fast growing professional services practice. So we created a persona named Lindsay. And Lindsay was a you know, five-year experience consultant. So she could come in as like a, you know, medium to senior consultant. And she broke her leg the first day. Now that didn't really happen. We put that into the story to add a little bit of drama. But by breaking her leg, what happened is she had to work from home. And we got to show off the advantages of this first, you know, remote work software solution. And this is from about 2013, 14. 
So it's pretty interesting to see that. She goes through her life cycle professionally of first day, first week, leading her first assignment, becoming a manager, and then mentoring others. And we got to show how the software paralleled that at every step of the way. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this story, how did that, um, how, how was that used to convince management? Was that internal to them or was how, that how was that internal? Happen? And uh, we, we did about a 20 page story and there was a 60 page deliverable that also included a lot of the technical analysis and budgets and feasibility and stuff like that. What do you from do? It's like almost like a proposal kind of story to get them to change their mind or, or think about it. That's well, awesome. at least they, they got them to think in terms of their employees perspective because they were looking only at the bottom line, but mm -hmm. their goal was adoption and agility. They wanted everybody what. to really buy in and change the way they work. So they needed to see the whole story. So and today, that's especially like, that's interesting. That was done earlier, you know, the handicap, because we're all kind of handicapped, but we also have the advantage of working at home. Yeah. You know? I mean, for, yeah. for someone who I've been working at home for a long time, it's, it's, it's natural for me, but I'm sure a lot of people, especially with kids are having a challenge with that, you know? So I think mm -hmm. it's really important for employee experience to get that message out. Yep. Absolutely. Well, yeah. the last one, and you asked me to look at a few of these different yeah. things from our, our work past. This last one is one of my favorites. Um, Mark, you remember human prototyping? Oh, yeah. Did that over, okay. yeah. I do remember that. Yeah. <laughs> so the idea behind human prototyping is that you use real humans to prototype an experience. So rather than just putting it on paper and PowerPoints, you take people into the field and you let them show what it's like. So here's one of our designers back then. Um, starting off projector on a wall, talking about how the digital, how the handheld device is gonna work, showing what some of the designs are like, here demonstrating some of the interactivity on one of the prototypes that we did. And notice everything is on cardboard. We oh, yeah. locked out the store in this space and we walked from station to station to station and had little posters that people could read about and little conversations and some workshop discussions along the way. But they got the feeling of having the experience for themselves, trying on glasses in this case, testing out some prototype stuff, software and um, evaluating different retail designs. So a walk, we, and, uh, I wanted to add one more thought to that so people don't get confused or think that it's too hard to do that. In theater, and we worked with the Alliance Theater on this project, we learned that when you're putting on a play, you do a stumble through, a walk through, and a run through. Hmm. So a stumble through is where you, like you're reading your lines for the first time, there's no X on the ground, there are no lighting, costumes, anything. You're just kind of getting a feel for what your role is going to be and how you'll interact with the other characters. Mm -hmm. When you do your walk through, which is what you just saw, your places are set. There's a little bit of lighting. There might be some music. You know, the retail coral areas, we use some big cardboard boxes to indicate kiosks and desks and sit down stations and things like that. Mm -hmm. Then you do your design work and you go all the way to run through, which is where you're actually trialing everything out with real people in a real environment. All of that before launch. And that one <laughs> approach makes your executives feel so comfortable. The hardest part of it is to sell the idea of a slower start. Usually everybody wants to start really quickly, mm -hmm. but if you start more slowly, you can get everybody on board and get all your details lined up so that what you end up with is exactly what you plan. That's fascinating. You know, I uh, so stumble through sounds like my average Friday night. I'm just, <laughs> I try to get it right at the walkthrough on Saturday though. <laughs> Especially at the holidays, uh, I'd like to invite the uh, the uh, our guests here, our, our, our audience. If you have any questions for Mike, let's uh, let's share them with everyone in the chat, um, and uh, and we we can maybe even bring you on screen if you're if you're so brave. So, I know some of you out there might have a question. So let let us have it, and indicate whether you want to come on screen or not with us, and uh, I can do that as well. Yeah. No, just and any question at all is fair game. Uh oh. <laughs> Don't know if I can answer it, but we'll we'll uh, we'll have fun with it at least. What, what's your shoe size now? <laughs> I get that one sometimes. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, you know, I want to also share a little story about uh, uh, some of the early early on uh, stuff that Mike and I did with uh, a thing we when social media was just becoming more popular on LinkedIn and and and. Uh, and uh, Facebook and such, Mike and I found a platform. I, I think you may have found it. I'm not sure. Ning. Ning, yeah. We created a, a social media platform. And we kind of were thinking of an association, but we call it the IDEA, the International Design Experiences Association, or Lions or something. Yeah, I didn't really want to have a, an association with a board and all that. 
And uh, I think God, we had like a thousand members or something like that, <laughs> so, yeah, or whatever it was. I, I remember we invited everyone and they accepted. Uh, but eventually we uh, we sort of, I think we gave that list to CXPA to found their deal or something. Yeah, we, yeah, we folded but, yeah, it again. That was yeah, the right yeah, thing yeah, to do. Like, here, yeah. guys, you do it. <laughs> oh, so here we have um, here we have a question from Carl. Carl, would you like to come on and and, uh, and ask everyone that question? I can bring you on just to turn on your video. Okay. Your mic. There you go. Hey, Carl, how you doing? Hey there, Mike. How you doing? Nice to Good. see you. It's been a while. It so has. My question here is because I'm in the same kind of position as um, as, uh, as both y'all. I can say that word because <laughs> you're from Atlanta. Y'all is that you know I do obviously sell organizations on ideas and proposals. And my curiosity question is: Could you actually think of doing a formal proposal in the form, more in the form of a story? Well, would that necessarily kind of evade those who are more left brain because they're looking for something more traditional from you? Yeah. So that's my question. All right. I, I don't know the answer, but I can <laughs> share my thinking with you because I don't know who your audience is. Right. What I do before I do any proposal is I ask, what were some of the proposals that worked for you in the past? What have you said yes to? And then try to find out what was the structure and the format and how does that work you know make sure it's the same team and the same people but ask them most people love that personalized experience and then there are two tricks carl that you can do to blending story with detail one of them is that in your storyboards you can kind of zoom in on a little report on a desk or on a tablet that somebody's holding and then show the spreadsheet show the charts show the bullet points yeah. that kind of a thing yeah. All right. No, no, that works. That works yeah. because, you know, actually we do this in the training courses, right? We're using a lot of visuals and graphics to make points. Yeah. And then we're saying a lot in the words that we're saying, you know, yeah. rather than putting words on a slide, for, mm -hmm. for example. Yeah. 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 And the boldest thing that I've done, and it works more than it doesn't, is to um, come out right away and tell the leaders, you know, the people that I'm pitching, whether it's a prospect or a boss or something like that, but look, we need to have a talk. I got to tell you, we're working on this customer experience thing, but it's just not going to work if you're the hero. Let me tell you why. And then you can hit me or do whatever you want to do. But the hero in this story really needs to be the frontline folks or the customers or our partners or whoever it's directed to. Yeah. So the biggest challenge is the one that you put right up front. You've got to tackle that head on. Yeah. Does that make sense to you? It sure does. And it softens them up a little bit as well. And there's um there's one more thing. Let me just check here real quick. There's one more thing that I've done. And um two years ago at CX Talks that Mark was a founder of, now CX Forums, I did a presentation called Breaking Big Things. And what I realized after lots of soul searching and a bunch of interviews and in preparation for that is that when people ask you for ROI and best practice and quick wins, what you've got to do is shatter that notion because it's filled with bias. If people want ROI on something new, what they're telling you is we made a bunch of investment decisions in the past and we want to make sure that we can still squeeze more juice out of them. So anything that you do can't destroy what we've done in the past. Is that like putting a ball and chain around your leg? Oh my gosh. So in the cases where that's appropriate, not all of them are like that and don't take this as advice for all situations and yep. your married life and things like that but <laughs> in some situations um if you tackle that bias approach right up front hey we're facing 2021 all the pundits have checked out nobody's doing really serious and specific you know guesses about the future they all know that it's coming too quickly and that everybody's changing at the same time so why don't we make one adjustment why don't we say that this ROI thing is something that we put last, not first. So don't discard it, but say, let's figure out what we can do and then figure out the most efficient, effective, profitable way to do it. Can we get on the same page about that? Yeah. So it's a little bit of chutzpah, a Yiddish word yep. for nervy yep. and ballsy and you know, positively confident. Yeah. And it usually gets people to open their mm -hmm. eyes a little bit. And once you've started that notion of, is ROI a really good thing to go after, you know, shareholder return? Or like the corporate board said, hey, we've got multiple bottom lines that we need to hit. We've <laughs> got to make money for the business or we don't stay in business. We got to engage our employees. 
we've got to do well for our communities, we've got to be sustainable, and so on and so on and so on. Customer experience at its core is design thinking, it's systems thinking, and it's all about giving everybody more of what they want. And we, that's have what good question. we have another question in very little time. So Carl, if you'll cut your video off, Martin, if sure. you'll turn your video on, and uh, Martin, you have a question or in a, in a comment, so feel free. I do, Mike, uh, I agree 100% that uh, stories are so impactful and you know they really uh, com combine a lot of things into one short message. My question is, do you have a process or a way to uh, speed that along? Because um, when I've done it, it seems like I'm starting over from scratch every single time. And I'm looking for maybe a more efficient um, way to uh, have a process to create more stories. Sure. Um, I'm going to be really quick because I heard Mark say we have very little time. Um, but there are two answers to that. They are yes and no. The yes part is a framework. The no part are the specifics. Let me give you a, a sample of how it works in the movies. Um, was it James Cameron that did Avatar? Yes. OK, so he commissioned a very extensive treatise. It's called dramaturgy in, uh, in acting. But it was the whole story of those tall blue people called the Navi. And it had details about hmm. how they got married and fell in love, what their religious rites were like. How did they learn? How did they pass on knowledge? What did they wear? What did they eat? What did they value? How did they assume power? What were their social roles? Blah, blah, blah. All those are called given circumstances in theater. And what makes a story work really, really well is if people can explore and discover the connections that make that story real for them, when they can see themselves in the story, when they can become the hero. So they're not Yoda, they're Luke Skywalker. They're not Dumbledore, they're Harry Potter. Okay, when you can put them in that role, you're golden. So it's part framework and structure, and I can share that with you after class if you like. Um, and it's part, you gotta muscle it up and figure it out for what it is, but there is no best practice for what's next. That's called next practice. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. So uh, this is uh, gonna conclude our, uh, our, our recorded portion of our presentation today. And I want to thank everyone for coming out and being a part of this, uh, especially, you know, a couple of days before Christmas. You guys are super. Uh, what we're going to do in just a moment, and, and for those of you who are watching the recording, you should really join us live here. Every Wednesday we're doing this, uh, and we're going to continue doing this for as long as we can, uh, which is hopefully forever, even when we can meet in person, because it's all about coming together, learning a little bit of something, and having some time to meet new people. So we're getting ready to go into 40 minutes worth of breakout sessions. We're going to have two breakout sessions with about four or five people in each room. And as we do this, um, I want everyone to uh, keep in mind, uh, you only have a few minutes together, but you can always connect with each other after the event as well. So thanks everyone. Miles, take us out of here and uh, I'll turn off the recording and we can get right to the networking.